We're going to cover the use of the state and local emission inventory system, also known as SLICE, which is the new online submittal system for point source air emissions inventory data. And in order to use the system, you're going to need to have a user account. And if you do not have one, you'll need to sign up for one, and you will do that by getting a hold of Catherine Williams. I am going to log in now to the system and I'm going to be logging in as though I am a facility, a company that is going to submit air emissions inventory data. So I click on login and then I type in my email address and my password, if I can remember it. And it worked. So we are in, and what you can see right now is you can see that there are three companies, the ABC company, XYZ company, and the SDH company, um, or facilities. We're going to be working primarily with the ABC company and the XYZ company. For facilities or for users that only are responsible for submitting for one facility, you'll only see one facility here at the top. However, there are users who will have the responsibility of submitting air emissions inventory data for multiple facilities, and you'll see them listed in the manner that you can see here. So we're going to start today by going through what is the most simple submittal that someone would be required to, to do, and that is going to be for a Title V area summary facility. So I'm going to click over here to the right where you see under actions, I'm going to click on the 99998XYZ company. Okay. And what you'll see when you click is you will see that we have reporting year, due date, submitted date, and status. And you'll see that 2017 is here and that we do have waiting for us an air emissions inventory that has not been started yet. If I mouse over the button over here underneath actions, it will say start. And as soon as I click that, this will take us directly into the system. So I'm going to do that now. And you will see the dashboard pop up. It's a very simple dashboard because this is for a facility that is required to submit only summary emissions data only. So what you'll see is you'll see the facility button, the summary emissions button, and the report attachments button. The one thing that is the same, whether we're, we're working with a, a summary only facility or we're working with a facility that is required to submit detailed data, is this facility button. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time running through this right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the facility button right here and we will run through the tabs that you see at the top. You can see facility, contacts, addresses, location, additional information. We would like the facilities to click on each one of these tabs and verify the information that we have listed right now for your particular facility. You can see the facility identifier, facility name, description, status, uh, and, and the NAICS code. You can also see comments. Down here to the right, you can see that we have an edit button. There are some things on these tabs that you can edit. There are some things that you cannot. Um, as we run through this, I'll come back to the edit button and show you how that works. But we'll click on contacts. And you can see that I have listed my contact here, Scott Hanks, Salt Lake Scott at hotmail.com. Then I put in a uh, fictitious location address and mailing address, as well as location information, and then additional information. The additional information includes a customer ID, which is very centric to us and not something that the facility is required to put in. It's something that we put in here at the division. So now I'm going to click on this edit button, and you'll see 
that there is nothing in the additional information that is editable or in the location. That's because if your facility has changed location, we would need to know about that as well as uh, the folks in permitting. Then we have the addresses, and the one thing that is modifiable is the mailing address. And we made that modifiable because uh, folks have requested in the past that we use different mailing addresses um, depending on whether or not they switch to a P.O. box or whether or not they, they just had a different location they requested that their mail went to. However, if you look at uh, the location, once again, that's, that's something that is read only because if you're changing location, we would need to know about that. The contacts is modifiable and changeable. So if you look at it, you can change who your main contact is. We only want one contact listed here, and we want it to be your main contact. You can see this button, this plus button over to the, to the side. What you can do with that is you can add additional contact information you're not adding additional contacts. You're adding additional contact information. Say a phone number. You could put a phone number in and you could start typing out the phone number. Um, I will demonstrate something here. We'll just say a uh, fictitious phone number. And then I'll hit save. And you'll see that it didn't like that. And you'll see up here to the top this yellow triangle with the exclamation point in it and that's where um, it, it has an error and if I click back on its contacts and it will show you that the format needs to be different than I had put it so if I come in and I say okay that's fine I'll put in the format that it's requesting and then I'll hit save again it will go to a blue bar at the top, meaning everything was successfully updated. We're now back on the main tab of facility, and the one thing on the main tab that is modifiable is comments, this comments section down here. This is a good place, especially for Title V Area Summary Only facilities, to list um, information concerning their air emissions report and it could be that, and we do have this happen on a, a somewhat regular basis, we'll have a Title V area summary only facility that didn't operate during a given year. This is a very good place to list that. Did not operate during, say, 2017. So we're going to say that, that, that we've done everything that we wanted to do here. And we're going to hit Save. And now we're able to go back and start to look at the rest of the emissions report. Once again, we are on the summary only report. And so this is a, a much more straightforward and simple air emissions report than we will be demonstrating when we look at the detail. So I'm going to now click on this summary emissions and it will open up. As you can see, there's no data listed, but the pollutants are listed down the left-hand side underneath the pollutant column. We have PM10 primary, PM10 filterable, PM10, PM2.5 primary, PM2.5 filterable, PM condensable, and then we have SO2, NOx, VOC, CO, lead, and ammonia. That doesn't mean that that's all the pollutants that we may be asking for. You can add hazardous air pollutants into this, but um, this is what the, we, we decided we wanted to have come up for the template to start with. Um, one thing I would like to discuss with this is going to be the concept of primary, filterable, and condensable. Um, PM10 primary consists of PM10 filterable and PM condensable. If you add the PM condensable to the PM10 filterable, you will end up with the PM10 primary. And likewise, if you add the PM condensable to the PM2.5 filterable, you will end up with PM2.5 primary. So I'm going to hit this button over here, or click on this button, edit, 
and it's going to make this now modifiable. When I now click on one of the pollutants, it'll open up. You'll be able to see that we now have uh, the estimated total emissions, and we also have the tailpipe emissions. Tailpipe emissions are for uh, non-road mobile tailpipe emissions. Uh, one good way to think of this is this is for the mobile emissions for anything at your facility that doesn't have a license plate. If you think about dozers or loaders or backhoes or forklifts. So this is what we're looking for. So I'm going to open each one of these up now. I'm going to start filling it out uh, with data that I, I just had created. As though I have gone through now and I've done all my calculations and I'm ready to fill out the Title V area summary. So I have a, a list of emissions that I can put in here and I'll start filling it out. We have our PM10 primary total and I have a little bit of tailpipe emission with that. And I will come down to the filterable. And what we're going to say, for the sake of demonstration, is that we don't have any lead. And if you look over here, you can see this little garbage can that I'm mousing over. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to delete this? Yes. And so we just deleted lead. Now I'm going to fill out the ammonia. But I'm also going to say that we have some chlorine. So I'm going to add. And if I click in the pollutant code box and I start to type chlorine, you will see the drop down list begin to occur. And then I'll see chlorine. I click on it. And now I can key in the emissions there as well. And now I have the emissions for my Title V Area Summary Report, and I'm going to click Save. I click Save, and it says that we were successful. We were able to successfully update the form. The one thing I would like to point out is this N right here. It corresponds to the chlorine, and it's under the column VOC slash PM10. The N means no, it's not already being considered as a VOC or PM10. If it was a Y for yes, that would mean that we would already be counting that in the VOC or the PM10, and therefore we would not charge for it because it would be a double count. So now that we have a successful update, we're going to go back and we're going to discuss the report attachments. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to say right now that there's no data found, but what I'm going to do is add a couple of report attachments. And I'm going to browse. There we go. What I have here is I have a cover letter that I created that I'm going to open. And I'm going to type in its description, cover letter. Uh, many facilities like to submit a cover letter when they submit their air emissions inventory. So we have a cover letter that we're going to attach. And then we are also going to add the calculations. So I'll go back and get the calculations. It's an Excel worksheet. I will open it and I will call it calculations. I'll click on save and now I have my attachments 
prepared and ready to go. So we are now prepared to begin the submission of the overall air emissions inventory report. So we're back at the dashboard, but before we begin the submission, we're going to come over here and we're going to look at the summary just to, to see the summary. You can see the summary report. So I click on the PDF and I open it up and here it is. And it shows me the summary report for the air emissions inventory that I'm prepared to submit. And you can see that everything is here and it looks good. So I'm going to close this now and we are going to begin the submission process. I'm going to click on the validate report button. Um, you can see that no errors were encountered while validating our report, which is a good thing. So we will now mark as ready for submission and then click the back button. We can now initiate the submission by clicking the initiate submission button. The first thing it will ask us to do is view the electronic document and we must do this in order to continue. It won't let us continue if we don't. So I click that button and I can now view the electronic document and this is everything that we have looked at before or entered as data before. There's the information for facility, contacts, addresses, location, additional information, as well as the summary information that we viewed previously. I will close that and now we are ready to continue. So I click the continue button and it brings me to the submission agreements page where it's asking me to click on three boxes. But before I do that, let's read the first sentence. I certify that I have not violated any term in my electronic user agreement and that I am otherwise without any reason to believe that the confidentiality of my user ID and or password have been compromised now or at any time prior to this submission. Basically, it wants to know that your user account has not been compromised. We'll come to the first box here and it says I am the owner of the account used to perform the electronic submission which means I am the owner of the user account that is being used to perform the electronic submission I have the authority to submit the data on behalf of the facility I am representing and I have reviewed the electronic report which we did so now we can continue Okay, so it is now going to ask me to provide answers to my security questions. And you should have set this up when you set up your user account. What is the name of the place your wedding reception was held? Now place. Um, and I am going to now put in the password. And we now have successfully submitted the emissions inventory. Submission confirmation. I can view the official copy of record. And it opens up and it shows me the signature page. And it's basically those three check boxes right here. Agreement one, agreement two, and agreement three. And then it is all of the information that we viewed previously on the electronic document. So we now have made a successful submission of a summary only air emissions inventory report and I can click done.